time for another video while yet another storm rages outside. This happens a lot in this island. So in a recent video I mentioned this uh, colour changing nail polish. It's basically temperature sensitive. It's for ladies who want their nails to change colour. I'm not sure why. I think it might show when they're angry or something like that. Not sure. But there are other lacquers that you can use uh, from the nail polish range that are, are quite useful. We've got this clear one. And the clear one is one of the most useful because if you've got a circuit board and it's prone to tracking between a couple of connections because they've got a modestly high voltage, then an easy fix for that is to get clean the circuit board off and get a clear nail lacquer and just to sort of paint over that area, it provides a localised uh, tropicalised lacquer in that area. I say tropicalised lacquer because if you buy the proper electronic stuff, the aerosol stuff, which tends to be somewhat more destructive, it tends to blanket cover everything, uh, then it, uh, it's called tropicalised because it's designed for highly humid or hot environments. It's sort of a wide ranging environment lacquer. And one of the disadvantages of the aerosol lacquer is that if you've got components like potentiometers, you have to try and cover every crevice up that that lacquer could go into. So uh, it makes it convenient. If you just want to get a small dab, then clear nail lacquer is a good option. But uh, also keep in mind, I just have to cover everything here, that some nail lacquers, I suppose, technically speaking, could be slightly conductive. I don't know. I've, I don't think they're conductive, but I just thought I'd say that anyway. That's my ass covered, so to speak. Uh, next nail varnish is Glow in the Dark. That is useful. Now, I have to say it's been a bit disappointing, the Poundland Glow in the Dark varnish. You get it for the Halloween and stuff like that, or in their standard range at other times of the year. And uh, it tends to be somewhat sparse on the uh, Glow in the Dark pigment. But fortunately, you can buy the Glow in the Dark pigment. Do I have any across here? Pretty sure I had some recently in the vicinity. Yes, I do. You can get uh, glow-in-the-dark pigments online, and uh, I think strontium... I think the, the most recent one is the strontium-based stuff. They, they call it rare earth, it's not that rare, but uh, it's one of the brightest glow-in-the-dark powders. And if you add more in, and the way I stirred it in, uh, I got a cordless drill and I put a bit of wire with a wee L-shape in the end and stuck it down the end of this. Used a, a small funnel to put the powder in and then just put as much into this as I could and stirred it up until it was quite thick. So what you end up is a fairly pasty lacquer, a gritty lacquer, that when you paint it onto things, it makes them glow for quite a time. I'll try and remember and show you this glowing afterwards, if it actually shows up. Uh, the next one is uh, an odd one. It's concrete effect nail varnish because apparently some ladies like their fingernails to look like concrete. But in reality... This is a sort of lacquer that's got a very fine grit in it. And uh, it's very useful for adding grip to things. If you actually coat something in it, it makes it kind of grippy and coarse. So it's quite useful for that. But the main uh, subject here is this one. It's called Fairy Glow Gel Polish. Now, a bit suspicious that this may not have been the original product because... Having bought it on eBay, it was promptly taken down and I got the wee notification saying this listing has been removed due to violation of eBay guidelines, blah, blah, blah. And uh, it still came through, which is fine, but it means I can't post that particular listing. But they listed a whole range of different colours you could get. I chose the red and yellow because it was obviously the most vivid. It seems to be that every colour was either biased towards red or yellow. And when you've got green, it just it either turned olive or mud. So, um... The most vivid transition was, uh, from the looking at the pictures of the listings where they showed fingernails with it, uh, was the red to yellow. So that's one I got. And this is an ultraviolet curing version. It's, if you, I suppose, I could paint it on my nail. Will I paint it on my nail? This is a bad idea. I tried this recently. One of my friends, my friends, encouraged me to do this to see if it would change colour. Um, he assured me that it would probably just come off very easily and all, you know, because it's called soak off. Let's do it anyway. This is, I'm going to regret this, haven't I? I'm not going to do a very good job of this because uh, I'm not really what you'd call into lacquering my nails. So, uh, right, let's put a couple of coats on. And to cure this, I, you know what, I could use a laser. Let's use an ultraviolet or near ultraviolet laser on my fingernail to cure it. Oh, hold on, let's bring it up and see if you can see that transition happening. It seems to be uh, an exothermic reaction. Oh, look at that all round the skin and everything. I, I really have done a shit job of this, haven't I? 
So now that should hopefully be it cured. I'm probably lying. It's probably not cured. Uh, it's kind of, yeah, it's all right. Let's put the next layer on. I could have zoomed down for this. I should really zoom down. For, oh, God, no, that's far too much now. Oh, no. Right. This is why I will never get a job as an, in a nail salon. It now looks like I've stuck my finger into a meat mincer. Uh, this time I'm going to use another device to cure it. I'm going to be using, oh, I've just uh, run out of cable here. I'm going to be using this ultraviolet curing device that has these high output LEDs. And uh, when I point at the nail, you can see that transition instantly that uh, it goes yellow, but it uh, has that exothermic reaction. This is an interesting unit. I shall take it to bits later on. It is an ultraviolet unit, sort of UVA for nail varnish. And uh, it's got other uses. It's great at exposing circuit boards. Oh, look at my finger. It's really gluing now. That's weird. Is that going to be... I put it on far too thick, didn't I? Yes, I did. Not to worry. This is a timer in it, but it's also a... The LEDs seem to have multiple chips, and it does... It seems to put out white light deliberately, perhaps to make it look brighter. Not really sure. So that's the, the fingernail now completely lacquered up. That looks terrible. Okay. Next experiment. If I bring in this uh, little plastic cup here and I put a resistor that I already coated in this and this is why I think this would be a really useful material and I zoom up in it as I should have done before. Let's zoom up in that resistor and then I shall turn the current on so there's no current passing through that resistor, so it's going to start getting warm any time soon. And when it does, you'll see that it's getting warm because it will gradually make the transition to yellow. And that makes me think, you know, it happens at 20 degrees Celsius. So that could actually, in many instances, be used to actually detect when an integrated circuit is uh, overheating or some components getting too hot. Not that 20 degrees Celsius is a terribly high temperature, but for chips that normally run cool, that could be a good indicator. And if I turn this off... Then after a short time delay, it will start going back. It might take a wee while for it to start cooling down. This is almost like watching paint dry, except it's watching paint cool down. There it goes. It's quite a vivid change. It must, I'm guessing it's based on liquid crystal technology. You know, the sort of, uh, the sort of uh, micro-encapsulated liquid crystal? Could be wrong. Maybe they've got newer technologies. Is this actually cured now? So uh, red means I'm cold. It's kind of orangey. It's not that cold, is it? If I heat it up with my hand, it's kind of sticky. Uh-oh. Uh, no, tell you what, let's get the heat gun into it. Is this a good idea? So that does mean my hand is currently below 20. Oh, there it goes. It's, it's on the borderline. That's quite weird, isn't it? So, yeah. Another thing about this, this is soak off nail varnish. Let's uh, do a bigger bit in fact. Let's uh, zoom out of it. And I'll show you that uh, exothermic type reaction again. So let's uh, paint this. Um, I'd, I wonder if it is, technically speaking, an exothermic reaction. I think it's like resin, where the resin heats up as it gets... Uh, as it starts making the change. You know if you get that two-part resin, you mix it together and it starts liberating a lot of heat, sometimes too much. So let's uh, do the UV thing in this and you'll see it do that uh, change again. It's quite vivid. There it goes. That is weird, isn't it? It's quite gratifying to do this. So yes, after having my friend having told me that uh, the that's uh, Kevin, the the layman of the county, the electrical layman who was, was visiting and uh, encouraged me to do that, he assured me it would come off very easily because it says soak off. And I thought, well, okay, I'll just dab it with the acetone like they do. No, do you know what soak off actually means? It means you get little cups of acetone and you actually submerge your fingers in them for 15 minutes. You basically dip your hands into solvent. See... In an industrial environment, the health and safety would be all over that, but apparently it's quite acceptable for ladies to do with cosmetics. So here's one I put a couple of layers on earlier on, since this is going to take a while to cool back down. And if I, uh, well, if I point the laser at it, maybe the heat from the laser will actually make the transition. Maybe not. It's not really making transition. Oh, there it goes. 
but not much. But the heat gun, on the other hand, will have a fast effect. Good result, that's quite neat, isn't it? Might as well give my finger a blast as well. There we go. So yeah, I don't know why you ladies want their fingernails to change colour, but for our perspective, having things like this is actually quite useful. So as I say, it's called Fairy Glow Gel Polish. It does require the ultraviolet curing device. You can either, I suppose, sunlight would cure it, uh, maybe take a bit longer. Uh, well, pure sunlight would, uh, direct sunlight would cure it quite quickly, I should hope. Uh, but ultraviolet torches would also cure it. So that just leaves, oh, tell you what, you know, ultraviolet would uh, make this uh, stuff glow real brightly, wouldn't it? So let's uh, energise this with ultraviolet. Is that working? I think it is. And I shall turn the light off over here and uh, remove the exposure lock. Oh, there we go. I should have painted one of my fingernails with the, the glow-in-the-dark stuff. Ah, the glow-in-the-dark. It is looking quite bright. It looks like a little vial of plutonium or something like that. So yeah, these uh, nail varnishes do have other uses. The, the gritty one for providing texture, the concrete one, the clear one for just uh, coating things in circuit boards, the glow-in-the-dark one for making things you want to to glow, and of course this uh, colour changing one for random other applications including coating components to see if they're showing signs of heat. So interesting stuff.